I dream of a world without suffering or care. My world, your world, not unjust or unfair. The sun shines without rancor and brightens the day, an orb and a talisman to show us the way. I dream for my children and the promise they show, my legacy unfolding as they flower and grow. My pride and my love grows greater with time. I will walk beside them on the road that they climb. I dream for my wife as she faces her fears. I need her belief and her laughter, but also her tears. I want her to know that her husband is with her, the love masked by illness, but still growing stronger. I dream of my future and the life I hope I will lead. The smiles and the positive are the things that I need. I see good things ahead and will enjoy all that life brings. The fun and the smiles before the fat lady sings. I dream also for you, friend, as your journey grows longer. And I hope you find joy and belief you can stay stronger. The world wants you in it and the place you must start is to believe it yourself in your mind and your heart. I got a lump under my arm um, and it came up seemingly overnight. Um, this was in April 2016. Um, and so literally next day I was in the doctor. He said, see a consultant. Um, the following week I was in a consultant um, and I had an operation. So that all happened, that was in one week um, from uh, finding this lump. Um, I duly Google this and think, oh, I'm going to get lymphoma or something. No, I got melanoma. Um, so I went from sta straight to stage three melanoma in April 2016. The key point was in 2017, I had a seizure. Um, and when scans were done on my brain, they actually found I'd gone fully uh, metastatic um, and there were seven tumors in my brain. That's the immune ones. Can you take us back to that consultancy room when you first got diagnosed? What was going through your head at the time? Not a lot. Um, I, I, I was reading the face of the consultant. The consultant, he wasn't an oncologist, he was a general surgeon. And it was more his face that was concerning because I'd already decided I had cancer. Because the first, you get a lump that shouldn't be there and you get doctors who frown at you and say, we need to take it out, then you automatically assume it's cancerous. I thought only any person would think otherwise. So I'd already thought it was a cancer, but the most common one that is found with a lump like that would be a, a different type of cancer, which unfortunately has a lot, um, if caught early enough, is quite curable. Um, so when I saw this consultant and saw his face saying, no, um, it's, it, it's, um, it's melanoma. And, and frankly, the fear on his face, that, that kind of emptied me. For Rollo's wife, Jo, it seemed like his diagnosis had torn away the normal life that they had planned together. So I think when you go to that horrible moment and you're in a hospital room and someone says to you, they don't even speak, it's, it's all visual. So the look is in their face, so you don't need them to use any words. And I think a lot of the time, I think for the first week, that was how I communicated with people. It was like everything was, they just took a look at me and I just took a look at them and it was just awful. You know, I, I, I suppose I immediately thought, that's my dream, it was gone. <laughs> Everything that I thought was going to be, was not going to be. And, you know, the worst thing was thinking about my kids and how I was going to have to help them be strong and, and that, you know, Molly wasn't potentially not going to have her dad walk her down the aisle. That's it's kind of the hardest thing, you know, to face. And then... I've got some great friends and you talk a lot about it and you realise that actually these things are not, it's not today, you know, you haven't lost everything today. Part of me is like, 
not that it's not happening and not that it's not real, but I think there's an aspect of it, that this positive mental attitude that it's not today, it's not today and make the most of today and just get through today and that's been the biggest thing that's helped me is just to get through today because that's all that matters. Rollo's approach to treating his cancer is a mixed one. He plays a very active role in deciding what medical treatments he has, discussing them with his oncologist at the Christie Hospital in Manchester. But alongside his prescribed treatments, Rollo also takes a natural approach through supplements, remedies, and a number of lifestyle changes, including going vegan. Through all of this, ironically, Rollo has become fitter and healthier than he was before his diagnosis. His mixed approach is an example of personalised medicine. To me, personalised medicine is personalised treatment, um, which means it's everything I choose to do in order to live my life with my cancer. Um, it's not necessarily personalising the dosage, frequency or type of drug that I take in combination. That's one side of it, is to personalise the, the drug treatments. The, the second element of personalised treatment to me is the complementary elements, the, the lifestyle choices I choose to make that are done um, to, to help me cope with the cancer and um, in some cases I think it, it helps me alleviate the side effects to the drugs I'm on and I think it just makes me feel better. Rollo's diagnosis came just as his daughter Molly was preparing to begin a year abroad as part of her degree. Being away from her dad whilst he goes through his treatments hasn't been easy for her. Does it play on your mind a lot? Yeah, I found it really difficult when I first went away because I felt like, obviously, that's never a good time. <laughs> It's never a good time for anyone to get cancer, but I felt like it was the worst time possible for me because I felt like I should be at home with my family because of all of this that's happening. Though not initially confident with Rollo's decision to turn down some of the drugs offered to him, Molly's mind has been changed after seeing how much he has progressed. I think he is going about it in a very proactive and um, just an amazing way, really. I think especially seeing, because obviously he's in a group and friends with so many other people who have the same type of cancer as him. He, seeing what routes they've taken, and how that has affected them differently, and uh, quite a lot of the time only going down the, med the heavy medical route has taken, has had a really detrimental impact to their quality of life and their health and ultimately destroyed what remainder of life they had left. It's nice to see that the impact of what my dad's doing holistically enables him to still have a wonderful life and he is practically the fittest and the healthiest he's ever been because of this. I'm happy that he chose to go down that route as opposed to full heavy radiotherapy and medical treatments, yeah. At his latest scan, one of Rollo's three brain tumours showed a growth of between 40 and 50%. This change could be a sign that the drugs Rollo is currently taking have stopped working for him. So it's, um, it's been a funny week, obviously, with seeing that the, the tumour's going. It means there's a, a bit of progression, and that first response to that is obviously panic. You, you know, like Monday I was not in a good place, Tuesday I was not in a good place. And then when you look into the reason why, it's because I'm, I don't have my plan. I'm, I, if I don't have a, um, it, it's not the control, it's the plan. If I'm comfortable, I know what I'm going to do next, then all of a sudden I start to relax and the panic goes. So it's quite, um, people have said it before, I've, I've said it in one of my poems, you know, fear isn't, is, you don't really fear the cancer, you fear the, the unknown, you fear not knowing what's going to happen. Um, so I was, I was um, struggling because I had decisions to face about what am I going to do next. Eleven months ago, pretty much to the day, I was told I had 12 months to live. Um, I'm here, it's 11 months later, and I actually feel, okay, there's been some slight growth on the tumours and the results just come through, but I'm feeling pretty good. Um, so, unless I pop off in the next four weeks, then actually, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm in the lead, I'm winning. For now, I'm winning. <laughs>